what is your uh your biggest number one topic you want to take away from this uh training um i well i wanted to see more um how you do what you put to your final project on your master bus and stuff after you do all your stuff on your plugins and stuff um, oh, okay how is you there, bring your final product in yeah okay is there a way to can you see the chat maybe you can put the the question i mean the the stuff that you want to learn in the chat so we can kind of do the tally of what everyone wants to learn yeah definitely i will yeah. do that yeah yeah, just put what you want to learn in the chat because that's what i'm going to ask everybody before we get started no problem Okay, I saw that. Thank you. So while we wait for other guys, so me and you can just talk if you want to talk, you know, maybe ask some questions sure. or yeah, I have some questions to ask everyone that I you know stuff that I have in mind because as a as a tutor, a, a teacher, a coach, I teach a bunch of students, but I still want to know, like, what is that the biggest thing that people are struggling with right now in their music career or music production skills? So, what would be the number one thing for you, like the biggest one? Um, I think it would be getting the final master, the song standard quality and, and a lot uh, most people like other engine uh, producers i speak with and stuff most of the time says it could be the quality of my plugins because i most of the time i use stock plugins i don't have no fancy hardware and stuff because again I, I as i say i do more commercial work and for me to spend all that money on those plugins and stuff is like buying a concord to fly from trinidad to tobago <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of thing you know <laughs> It is unnecessary because it does the job with what I need anyway. I mean, I have some of the most top clients in Trinidad and Tobago, so and they love my work, so they call it their work. So, but it's just to get to that. When I like, I did a couple songs for some friends and uh, people I know, and they they love it. it. It plays on the radio and stuff, but I still find it it's missing a little bit of that. Oomph. Like when you, when I put it up more against international mixed music, you know, not so much the local standard as well too. Because a lot of the fellas don't I realize watching what they're doing, they're just watching YouTube videos and they don't really know what it is they do. They just see a man turn it up to 10 milliseconds attack and 35 milliseconds release on your compressor. So he's just doing that all the time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of thing. So I know basically they just 
Welcome, Winston Hill. Sorry? No, uh, uh, Winston just came in. I was just saying. Oh, oh, oh. oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. keep going, keep going, uh, Aaron. Yeah, so I, I just trying to see like what I missing to get it. I don't know if it maybe it was the plug, the plug, it is the plugins or so forth. Or you know, I just I was saying I just was gonna look in the musician and say, ah, oh, okay, <laughs> that's what I was missing, you know. <laughs> Because I, mean, I looked at your accolades and you're a very experienced guy, you know? So I, I, I look up to what you have here. Uh, who, 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 where's that noise coming from? Is it coming from you or Winston? No, no, no. I have not been going on by me at the moment. I'm, I'm eating dinner, that's it. <laughs> by myself. Oh, okay. Wife is watching TV upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can I, I can answer those questions right now, you know. Uh, sure. While we wait on other guys to come in. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, you think your mix doesn't have that hump, and you thinking maybe it's because of your plugins. Is that correct? Yeah, I think maybe that's the extra step that I need to get that extra sound, you know, that cl that clarity and that full sound. Because I mean. And doing everything that I'd learned to do along the times and using these stock plugins that I should use. Like, well, I mean, I have Fab Filter as well, too, which is excellent. Um, but most of it is Logic Pro plug um, stock plugins uh, use. Yeah, Logic, the stock plugins are good enough. And um, yeah. I have uh, some story that I'm going to share with everyone when you know people come in mm -hmm. that made me realize that. The plugins and the hardware's they're not the uh, they're not the magic bullet like they you know like we were told. Right. So when I discovered that, I stopped using third plugins to mix. I, I only use uh, stock plugins. I don't okay. use like a third third party type of plugins. Right, right. I mean, I still use them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, to, to get a certain song there, yeah, 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 correct. But you have to, you have to get good using the stock plug and uh, the stock plugin first. Mm. Then after that, you can start graduating to because you have to learn that skills for you. Got to learn how to make properly. Right, 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 right. right. The plugins they probably can boost your your mixing by maybe five to ten percent. Right. And you, you can quickly mess things up if you don't know what you're doing, but you still have to learn the skill. There is no shortcut. You have to learn the skills. Right, right. So, um, how's it going? Uh, Infinix Hot A. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And Winston hasn't said nothing yet, you know, so <laughs> maybe he's eating lunch or something. I hear I'm here, guy. bro. Oh, what's up, Winston? I, I'm here. I appreciate your hosting this, man. I got a few of your emails, bro. I just, I, you know, you, you got a wealth of knowledge, man. You got, so I'm just trying to pick up a little bit. Oh, no problem. No problem. Can you uh, type in a question, the number one thing you want to learn from here? And that's how I'm going to do like the, the stats to see, you know, the most important thing that we can start with first from what you okay. guys are putting in the chat. No. Uh, Infinix Hot 8. I'm still waiting on the, for him to, Say hello. Infinix, unmute. Don't need bottom left of your screen. <laughs> uh, thank you, Aaron. If you're having problems. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be the moderator for this. <laughs> yeah. So, like I was saying, uh, Aaron, about the plugin quality. Mm -hmm. So, that, that that's, uh, that's my, uh, my own uh epiphany that i had because uh, there's a story i'm going to tell everyone when people come in when when i had a, a studio back in uh la right by the nickelodeon okay and, uh, I'm, i can tell the story a little bit now maybe i'll tell it later when other people come in mm. so what happened was you know i play music too I, i'm a musician i play bass. Oh, okay okay i play drums i play keys i, I play all that stuff so all right. I had a, a, a production team with songwriters and my co-producer partner that we, you know, opened the studio together. So we were recording a whole bunch of songs and trying to get placement. And I will share today my story with uh, Beyonce and uh, Rihanna and the, uh, 
maybe we also get some time to share my story with uh, uh, Beyonce's publisher called Big John Platt. I don't know anyone who knows him. It's now, I think it, it now is now one of the uh, the president of uh, Universal Music. Oh. So anyway, going back to this uh, equipment story. So this particular day, I went to church to go play bass because I play bass, you know, back then in LA. I went to go play bass and I came back home to the studio at night and all this $10,000, $20,000 equipment was on the, was in our studio. I'm talking about the Apogee Symphony. Those are like, like 20,000 then or how much they're selling them for. Then uh, Neve, uh, the Neve uh, preamp that uh, Neve, uh, was he 1073? Yeah, Neve 1073. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. The tube, one b tube tech compressor CL1B that was in the studio too. Mm -hmm. Then the, the microphone was like a tube mic. I think it was like a maybe U87 and U47. One of those top microphones, right? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, what the hell just happened? Like all this equipment that I've been dreaming about that everyone talk about online that when you get this, your mix is about to be golden. I just, in one night, all this equipment came to the studio. So I'm like, what happened? So I was talking to my partner. He said, well, what happened was down the street from us, this not Hollywood big studio, I think something got caught on fire. So they needed a place to put all their equipment so they brought it to us. I'm like, wow. And I had a session the next day, right? With this 14 year old kid now, this 14-year-old kid is now famous now on Disney. His name is Z-Money. So mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, I have this recording tomorrow. So this is, I'm going to test all this stuff. Then I tested the stuff. I used the microphone. I ran it through the, you know, the big 1073. I ran it through the Apogee converter. You know, the Apogee converter is like the biggest, you know, AD, uh, A, A, uh, the biggest analog conversion from, you know, analog and uh, digital, to digital. Right? yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have one of the, the highest ones. Wow. So <laughs> I was excited then. Um, the quality improved, don't, don't get me wrong, the quality is amazing. Yeah, yeah. When it came to the mixing and everything came out, when I was done with the mixing, I still didn't like my mix. So I was like, okay. okay. So yeah. I think it's not the equipment, man. Like multiple buttons. So, and if you have not, for, and I'm telling this story, you know, I've been saying this, I've been telling this story in one of my videos. I don't know any, if anyone saw those videos that I run ads on. So people can break out of that myth because I, I, I always started to question, so why did I believe this was true? And it ha I think it has to do with the audio industry because they had to sell this product to us. So they probably create this uh, belief, this myth that we need this crutch to sound good. But no matter how much plugin, if you see every individual producer out there, most people are just collecting plugins. I, mean, I did the same thing. I just collect. I see this one, I collect it. You know, the crack version and the one you can afford, you just <laughs> collect a whole bunch of stuff. Unless it's hardware, it's just a collection. <laughs> exactly. The like, same thing with hardware. It's just collection. You're just collecting stuff. But which of those two do you actually 100% know what they do? True. Exactly. That's the big question. Yeah. You know, like, uh, like that Bruce Lee saying, they say, Bruce Lee said, I'm not afraid of the guy who was lent a thousand kicks. I don't know if you've heard that before. Yes, 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 said, yes. I'm afraid of a guy who was lent one kick and, and a did thousand it a thousand times. times. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that, that same mentality. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. the same mentality with, you know, with music and uh, production and mixing when we, when we have, because this and they're just tools. And if you don't really dig in and learn how to use those tools better than the other producer and the other engineers, we're just collecting, collecting, you know, right. uh, collecting gears and collecting plugins. Yeah, yeah. That, that is not a way to get better at all. The way to get better is to. Hey, what's up, Patrick? 
So the way to get better is to learn one thing or maybe a few, a few tools like mm-hmm. compressor, find one compressor. Like I said, th- this is what happened to me after all this shattering uh, beliefs of those uh, myths about trying to learn, I mean, using equipment to, to improve my mixing instead of actually learning the skills. After that story that I just said, told you guys, I stopped depending on analog gears and third party plugins. Mm. So I just started learning how to mix with only stock plugins. Because the stock plugins now in 2022, compared to way back then, <laughs> they're way more quality right now. Yeah, yeah. You, have, you have better quality stock plugins, so there's no excuse. The third party plugin, you can use it to mix. And I'm going to show you an example. That's why I pulled a session that a client sent to me today to see if we can use that as an example so you can see. The, the plugins, they can get you probably maybe 10 to, I mean, a 5 to 10%, depending on if you know how to use it, they can give you that edge, but they can't save you. <laughs> there is no plugin right, yeah, yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. just throw on your mixing and all of a sudden, boom, you're going to be hanging with... Uh, Kanye West or whoever is the top, you know, artist you're trying to sound like. That that plugin doesn't exist. I'm sure if that plugin does, yeah, yeah, if that, that, plugin that exists, yeah. Exists, <laughs> whoever makes that plugin will be a billionaire overnight. A billionaire, yeah, copyright. <laughs> exactly. I, I wish I could make something like that. I could just retire. Like that. <laughs> Well, I get, uh, the guy I, who I learned most of myself from, um, he, his motto was, shit in, shit out. <laughs> if I get that shit recorded, no matter how much you polish it, it's not going to shine. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, Infinix, Hot 8, and Patrick, can you go in the chat and put, one of the, uh, put the number one thing you want to learn from this training today so we know the, the topics that people really care about so I'm, I'm not just talking... Out of my butt. Yeah. So, uh, it's four fourteen. I'm still trying to wait for people to come in. Uh, and uh. Maybe Winston, maybe Winston can introduce yourself and tell us where you, you know, where you're at location wise. Okay, um, Winston Hill. I'm in Delray Beach, Florida, which is the nice. south. I'm about uh, 45 minutes away from Miami, so oh, Miami awesome. and West Palm Beach. Awesome. Um, I've, been, I've been messing with music for the last probably 15 years. Oh, wow, and, good. And um, I made a lot of songs but the mix has never been up to par, you know? Mm. Um, I, I did a mix just last year and I went back and I put it on, you know, I put it on iTunes, everything. And I listened to it today and I was like, damn, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, hey. is the best policy, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, the mix was terrible, man. So <laughs> I, 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 I've been taking some classes. I joined like Pure Mix, and I, I joined uh, uh, this guy out of, uh, out of uh, he's crossed the water. And I've learned some things. I've learned some things. But then I got your email about, about two weeks ago, man. And I've been interested in checking you out. So I'm on here now, man. So uh, good, 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 good. I'm, I'm going to get your mixing thing, too. So don't, don't I'm going to take it. No, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Uh, Infinix High A. I like that. Okay, name. so. My name is Greg Lowstone. I'm from Ghana. Okay, Ghana. And then, yeah, in Africa, Ghana, West Africa, know, Ghana. Yeah, Ghana. I'm originally from Nigeria too. So, okay, that's great. Nice meeting you all on this yeah. platform. Actually, I'm, I'm a beginner in, in the producing industry, so I'm okay, no kind problem. of learning yeah. stuff. So I saw your advert. And I just want to take advantage of that. Uh, so what, what is the number one? What's the I would love to know. Want to learn today? Type it in the type it in the search uh, in the chat for us, please. Okay. 
Let me just chat to you. Come in. And um, Patrick, you can come on and introduce yourself too. Okay, I think I've sent it now. All right. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the other guy's name is Chris Salim. Uh, he, he has a whole thing. He uses Cubase, so that's why I sort of followed him. So. Okay. What 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 DAW do you use? Cubase. Oh, Cubase. Yeah. So okay. what, what, what is the number one thing that you have problems with doing uh, with your mixing? Um, right now, I, my my mixes have been too bright and um and um <clears throat> not a not enough full body on them or whatnot. And of course, the vocal the vocal chains um probably too much uh, reverb, um, stuff like that. There. But like I said, I've been learning. So I, I, right now, I mix is 120% better than that one I sent, that song I sent to iTunes. <laughs> like I can hear it and I know the, the problem is, you know what I mean? So all right, all right, all right. way too bright, way too bright. You gotta, you gotta dull it down some. All right, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys, uh, Today I plan to like go all in and bless you guys with a whole bunch of secrets that I've learned over the years. But I'm gonna tell you my mistakes too. And one of my mistakes, one of my mistakes, many, I have many, I made a whole bunch of mistakes. But one one of them that uh that I think I want to start today's training with is uh is a concept called learning how to see and learning how to hear first. So there's this concept, I don't know if you guys know about it, it's called be, do, have. The be, do, have concept is, uh, is uh, a, a very good framework to create success in any area of your life, be it financial success or career success. And the be, do, have is, the concept is being first, because we are called human beings for a reason, right? So. Mm -hmm. Being a human being, the, we have this tendency to always want to do first, which is the second level, do, activity. Oh, give me the steps. What do I need to do to get X, Y, Z? Tell me what to do. But most of the time, the first level is seeing and hearing and being. So what do I mean by that is as, a, as an engineer, for you to learn how to mix professionally, you have to first of all know how to hear and see professional quality mixes. And the reason I said this was one of my biggest mistakes, I met this guy way back in 20, maybe 2008. It was an event. I went to this event with Dave Pensado. Do you guys know Dave Pensado? Dave Ever? Pensado is one of the big and a mix engineer. He is one of my mentors. Uh, he is, is, is mixed for Beyonce, a whole bunch of stuff. Just Google him, Dave Pensado, D-A-V-E. Yes, yes, yes. I know that he, he, they have oh, plugins named after I him. I met <laughs> Dave Pensado at this event, and I met this guy who is very close friend with Chris Lord RG. Do you guys know Chris Lord RG? Mm -hmm. This is legends you call in the legends you talking about it. <laughs> yes, Chris Lord RG is a legend. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. If you have Waves plugin, it's named you have, right, right, Chris Lord, right, right. CLA plugins, yeah. Exactly. That, that's... This guy is friends with C Chris Lord RG, right? And I met him at this event, and we exchanged numbers. And he said, "Oh, C uh, uh, CLA trained me on mixing." 
and you know i hang out with him i'm like oh can you teach me mixing is that cool so i got on the phone with him you know uh, after we, we met at that event we went for lunch me him and one of some you know good guy good friends of mine so we exchanged numbers then i called him like two weeks later and say you know can you give me some tips on how to mix and this guy told me first of all i sent him a mix a pro two session and he did a mix for me and he sent the mix back i was like what the heck is this i was going through the mixings and all the stuff he, he did so i got on the phone and i said so oh, give me some tips and the thing it started with he said first of all you gotta uh, you gotta learn the recording i'm like man recording i don't know but i don't want to know about recording give me give me the mix and he said, before you get there, then you have to just listen to a bunch of mixes and write down what you like about them. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Just give me the tips, bro. Give me the EQ. Give me the compression <laughs> settings. Just give me the answers. Yeah, That's just give what me the I answers. Wanted to know. <laughs> so I was so impatient. See, everything I was saying was just doing like this. You know, when he said, when, when you meet someone that's like way ahead of you, when they give you some tea, they just go over your head because you don't understand it. You know, because my brain was all about, give me the numbers, what is the frequency? Let me just write them down so I can cram and memorize this stuff. So years later, all the stuff they showed me, you know, I, I, I kind of tried them, but I just left them alone. They're not looking for something else. Then years later, I just realized that I'm, I'm just coming back to that. Like, it took me like maybe like five or six years to realize that what this guy said, even though I didn't get it then, but that was the beginning. That, that's how you learn how to mix. Right. And I heard it from another uh, big engineer called uh, uh, Jason Joshua. I don't know if you guys follow him too. I met Jason Joshua, by the way, too. So he, he said, you know, like the, 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 the Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off. You've seen that movie, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. The, the karate kid told Mr. Uh, Mr. Miyagi, told him he wants to learn how to mix. They said, just wax on, wax on, wax on, wax on. He was like, no, that's not what I want to learn. But he didn't realize that he was learning how to, how to, how to, how to fight. And the same right. thing with mixing. When you, when you just listening to... To the mixes that you like it just sit there don't even do nothing just listen yeah yeah and just listen that's how your brain start to create like a rolodex a mental rolodex of good mixes and you start to maybe write down okay i like these vocals this is what i like about this vocal because it has this shine on the top around you know maybe right. if you know frequency you can write it them goes, down yeah. where you think it's yeah. at maybe 6k 8k and I like the attack on the vocal, and I like the, the kick, I like the punchiness of it. I like the way the, the mix is sitting right in front of my face. I like what they're doing on the left and right. I like how they push this to the back. That's right. how you do your wax on wax off. Please, man. And those, those uh, listening sessions, they will create uh, like an imagery. And that's why I say learning how to see, because sound is imagery. What we do is not just auditory, it's also you know, imagery because we create an optical illusion. When you, when you listen to a left and right and you have a vocal in the center, that vocal is not really in the center, it's an illusion. Very true. So that's what I mean by learning how to see and learning how to mean, hear first. Mean, that's the beginning. The and I can promise you, when you do that, often, it's sometimes instead of just practicing mixing, you have to practice mixing. There is no way around that. But before you do practice, just listen. And this is why I created this. Uh, can you see my screen that I'm sharing the, the uh, Ableton session? Yes, I see it. I'm seeing it clear. Yeah. OK, that's why I put this in right here. Jason Joshua is one of my one of the mixes that I'm learning this style right now, I have learned a whole bunch of people uh, style, Dave Tensado, Phil Tan, uh, Saburn Ghani, and um, a whole bunch of mixes, but 
this are one of my top mixes that I, lo that I love. So before I start any mix, I just play this stuff. I remind myself, you know, my taste. Because what we have, the number one thing we have as a mix engineer is our taste. So I just play them. So let me let me play a little bit of this. I'm gonna be your person. Get it over here. Gotta take a seat, put some mouse on my tongue. You know I'm a freak, I'm a lick your body. And I wanna talk about it. And I know you don't. I've been holding guard for so long. I give up all of the shit for you I can get you out, right, I just need a night, get you alone Notice in the race, you can pick the brakes, get you in the zone Hit it when we fight, but we say goodnight You're on my time I just listen to this to kind of remind myself of my taste and also have like a mental Rolodex of where I want to take the song to. And another, another thing that I, I noticed that happens to me often is I can sit, I could sit with a song and try to get the mix to sound right for like days. And I still don't get it to sound the way I want to. Then I go back to this uh, exercise because like I'm telling you, I don't do this all the time sometimes, but I know I should be, but sometimes I just forget or I get forget. lazy yeah. or I get too confident. Like, you know what? I know what sounds good. Let me just mix it. <laughs> then you realize that yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm all over the place. I don't, I don't really know what I want. Then I come back here and I listen to all this and I realize, okay, I want the vocal to sound like this. Okay, I get the idea. And once I have the image in my mind, I'm telling you, this happens all the time and it's going to happen for you. And I want you guys to come back and tell me or tell all of us when he, ha when he does. I finished that song in one hour. I'm telling you. Once I get the idea in my mind, I can oh. see this, where the song wants to go. I can finish that mix in one hour, just like that. So. So. Hey, Jane. Welcome, Jane. So, so uh, I can finish that song in one hour. Once I realize, once I have a, an idea of where I want to go with the song. So, um, so let me let me bring up a slide because I created a slide as well, just in case. Uh, let me bring up the slide and Patrick and Jane, can you guys introduce yourself and tell us, um, put in the chat, what is the most important thing you want to learn today? May I have to unmute your mics, guys. What? Yeah, I'll unmute your mic. All right, okay, since I haven't heard from them, so let's just move on. Uh, can you guys see the, the, the slide, the screen? Yes, the mix and launch, I've seen it. All right. So this is uh, some of the topics we're gonna to cover today. Oh, I'm hearing a... Uh, there's an echo. I don't know. Patrick, um, I don't know. you need a headphones or you need to mute your mic. Yes, please mute your mic. Uh, 
All right. I still, I still hear the, I still hear the echo. Okay, it's stopped now. Okay, 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 it stopped. All right, moving on. So the mixing lounge, this is uh, this is the first uh, event and I, I, I really want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, this is the first of uh, this event called the mixing lounge and I would like to probably continue. You know, if you guys decide that you like this, I'm going to probably do this maybe once a week or twice a month. I don't know yet. You know, we'll, we'll figure that out. So the topic that we're going to cover today is, uh, there's so many topics I'm going to cover, but these are just the ones that I put on here. Uh, how to avoid bad mixes, muddy mixes, how to avoid releasing, releasing bad quality songs, how to mix and master like pro how to mix vocals to two tracks, understanding EQ and frequency and compression, mix speaker translation, how to make a living as a music producer, mix engineer, how to make vocals sit well in the mix. Before we go into the training, I wanna thank you for taking time to be here. And uh, I wanna congratulate you for taking the dance step because you're about to be blown away with the info I'm about to download on you today already started and you know giving some info but so uh so my name is Bomin Solomon I have 25 years of experience I have two Grammy nominations uh Bagma Award I've worked with Beyonce Ray J T Pain Darius or Super Sam and I've got some placement and uh sold you know a bunch of courses and sold some records with artists that I work with all over the world. And uh, for some people that like to, you know, prove, this is me and Siraya when she came to our studio. I don't know if you know Siraya, if anyone knows Siraya, then this is Dave Pensado. Dave Pensado is uh, one of the top guys I was talking to you about. I don't know if you can see. So this step in saddle yep, and this nice. is this guy is Gra john graham when i when i met john graham he wasn't famous then no one knew this guy now is he is crazy famous he's like the master engineer for billy eilish now so it's crazy famous now and uh, this is some of the billboards that i did with uh, my team uh, mtv also as well so let's get started how to avoid releasing bad quality songs. Uh, simple way to avoid it is to get a better mix or to do a better music production. And uh, tagging this with all the other stuff that I already talked about. I know some of you that came late, I can give you a quick uh, run through. What we talked about before you guys came was a quality of plugins. Uh, Aaron was talking about how he believes that he needed some quality plugins to be able to get better mixes or he needed some like uh, expensive hardware. And I told him a story how you don't really need that. All you need is to build your skills as a mixing engineer. I want you to build your skill as a mixing engineer with, you can even start with stock plugins and you can get something really quality with top plugins. The third party plugins or your external hardware, those will improve your mixes by 5%, 10%, 10%, depending on how you know how to, how good you know how to use them. So, uh, also avoid bad mixes and muddy mixes. Bad mixes, that is really general, you know, and uh, muddy mixes, it, it comes from cleaning out your instrument with the muddiness. A muddy frequency is always around the lower mid range between 250 to around 400, sometimes it goes all the way to 700, depending on what type of song you're trying to create. And I'll be showing you some uh, practical in a, in a minute. And how to mix like a pro, how to mix vocals to two tracks. So 
So let me pause that and let me bring out my door again so we can do some examples. Uh, can you confirm that you can hear this sound on your side? Can you hear that? Um, can you guys hear the music I just played now or no? Yeah, I can hear it. Yes, sir. Sounds good. All right, good. So, sounds very great. Uh, in the chat, uh, I don't see enough questions in there, so. I'm just going to go with what we have in there, so we're not wasting time. So this is a song that a, an artist sent to me today, actually. If I got away, no nigga gonna sit and miss out. Me and my days trying to post long and everybody catching plays. Don't want to hear on the beat, rather hear you got trouble. My feet ain't just made for walking. I'ma step on a nigga, I'm still in the trap. And he can play games and lose his life. Cause we can send bullets to where he at. Stop me that song, they ain't did yet. You will see she put a foot on they neck. Hit a boy, they get, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass, put a nigga to rest. Ten four six eight yeah it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me that's something they ain't did yet. UFC she put a foot on their neck. Hit a boy did yeah but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass put a nigga to rest. Cutting going on in here. So I didn't need that. Uh, if I got away, no nigga gonna see the miss out. Me and my day trying to. So when you mix in a, a, a vocal to just two tracks, which is not my preferred way to do it, I prefer to have all of the stems so I can manipulate. But most of the time, when you're working with, uh, you know, like indie artists, you know, sometimes major label artists. You don't have to stand. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, eight, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. So what I do is, if, if, I know this is not a, a perfect mixing situation for me because I'm using. You can see the headphones I'm using. It's like a cheap fifteen dollar from on, from Amazon, but you could still get some good done with that. If you know what you're doing, so uh, so what I do is I, I look at the, I listen to the 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 music, and I look I look at the frequency the music are hitting, so I see what pocket do I have that can put my vocals in, and that's the reason why when you mix vocals it's not sitting well with the beat is because you're not making space for the vocals in the beat, so you, they're sitting on top of each other. So I look at the do you guys have Stan? If you don't have Stan, you should get it. This is free frequency analyzer. You can just analyze it and see what's going on there. Okay, you see right here? This is 5K all the way to what? 10, I mean 14K. And right here is from 2K to 4K. So that's my need right here. That's my eyes. There's a little pocket there, but let's see. Okay. See, this is where the majority of the higher is. Okay, now, can you, if you can learn this, this is another good trick. You can look at the frequency and see what element is dominating a particular frequency. The, the, the snare drum, I mean, the clap, or whatever snare you want to call it, it's around the 2K, 3K area.
When that cloud hit, is around that area. What the eye at is around, is around AK all the way there. So there's a pocket right here for vocals to sit on, which is around all the way. Okay, so I know I have a, I have around that pocket area. Then if I, if I want my vocal to sit well. I'm still gonna have to maybe take a little bit of one K out. So um, let me put an EQ in there. Like I said, I'm gonna be using sub plugin. This is uh, Ableton Live sub plugin. So I'm gonna change my EQ to MS. If you know what MS is, that means mid side EQ. So I know the mid range for my vocal is gonna be around maybe 1.2. So I can dip that a little bit. I already know that my snare drum, my clap is around 2K, 3K, and my I hat is around 6K, all the way to 14K. So I just dip a little bit of that. So let's put the vocals back in. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yes, yeah, a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Okay, let's. Take the EQ out and let's listen. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six say yes a bit. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six say yes a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me that's something they ain't did yet. UFC she put a foot on a neck. All right. Wow. Um, if great. you have any question, you could just unmute yourself and ask me. So I know. So I'm not just going through stuff and you guys confused about it. So, uh, so vocal chain, I know so some of you want to talk about vocal chain. So let me bring up uh, a, a lesson that I prepared for you guys real quick. Uh, So for vocal chain, this is gonna really help you guys. Okay, this right here. So can you guys see this? Uh, can you see the screen? The signs of vocal mixing? I'm seeing it. You see that? Oh, no. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, oh, I'm good. seeing it clear. All right, good. So uh, <clears throat> vocals is one of the, the number one thing you have to get right as a mixing engineer. And uh, I remember a whole bunch of my clients that asked for their money back. <laughs> it was because of their vocal mixing. So that's when I knew I need to learn how to make vocals. So I, I've taught a whole bunch of, uh, you know, practices up on practice. I created a whole bunch, I've created almost 600 vocal chains. And I'm going to show you proof because, you know, so you don't be like I'm just saying anything. So after doing all that, I came up with this system. This framework is called, you know, the CCTA. So I come up with acronyms to, to kind of remind myself of, of stuff. So control, character, tone, and you know, spatial effects. So the two major part you want to you want to memorize is control. The reason why most vocal mixes are not sounding good is because they're all over the place. Vocal is one of the most dynamic instruments that we have. You know, the vocal cord, the, the way you speak, then the singing. So it's too, a lot of dynamics going on. So you have to control it. And how do you control it? You control it with multiband compression. Then the number two thing you wanna, you wanna do is character. Most of the vocals that you hear that you say, man, I love this vocal. The reason is because they have character because they're going through saturation, ammonic distortion, tape, and a whole bunch of other stuff. 
that's the reason why we fall in love with this type of sound because they have character. Then the tone shape inside is just, uh, you know, how you want to shape the vocal to sit well on top of the, you know, the tracks or what that you're mixing on. So shaping it, maybe you're scooping something out, boosting a little bit of this, boosting a little bit of that. Then the special effects, those are the delays, the reverb, the space around it to, you know, make it big and make it wide. So these four things, if you memorize these four things, CCTH, every time you mix vocal, if you always think about this, you will always get your vocal to sound professional. So I'm gonna give you some, some numbers because I know a bunch of you love numbers and I, I, I do too. So multiband compression, Okay, the groundwork, yeah, yeah, that's very important. The groundwork, the first thing you got to make sure you do is the groundwork, which is re reducing the breadth, using RX isotope to clean up the vocals, you know, clean up the clicks, the mount, um, mount, uh, mount clicks and all that. You can use that to clean it up. Then the, the, the not step three, step three is to do like, uh, if you want to do syllables, you know, maybe some syllables is too low, you want to bring them up and all that, or some is too poking out, you can bring them down. Because when you do those syllable gain, clip gain with your syllables first, when you send them to a compressor, the compressor is not overreacting because you already level out the vocals manually first. That's the reason why we do that. Then once you're done with all the groundwork, then you can go into your, you know, the, the, the vocal mixing framework. Two to three, multiband vocal compression. And the way you split the frequency is at 100 in the, in the bottom. That will take care of your plus, your pop, 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 pop. all the beeps and the, you know, those are uh, the beep sound, the, the, the plop sound. Then from the 100 to 1K, that's the fundamental of all the vocals, the singing, the talking, the rapping, those are the fundamentals. Then your 1K to 10K, those are all the characters and the uh, harmonic distortion on all those edginess, aggressiveness. Then the, from the 10K to up, that's your, you know, your air. That's how you split the frequency with your multiband compressor. Um, I, did you guys get that so far? You want me to keep going? Or do you need me to explain something? I'm good. Okay. All right. So then the ratio that you use is between two to three to one, two or three to one ratio. Threshold between 20 and 25, sometimes you can dig in all the way to 30. Just use your fingers and just, you know, pull it to see if it's grabbing it enough. And you do that for each, uh, each frequency band. Then the attack, you could start from two milliseconds all the way to 20, or you can go all the way to 50 if you want more attack to come through. Then the release, I usually just leave it at 200 milliseconds. Then the gain reduction, actually, the gain reduction, you can get all the way to three to six dB, actually. If you want to dig in more in a particular uh, frequency range, because we're using the multiband conversion to actually EQ the vocals before we EQ the vocals, or after we EQ the vocals. So you can dig in between 100 or 1K pull it down so the more energy of a 1k to 10k can poke out so depending on how you want to carve the vocal you can just move stuff up and down there then the character section is when you add your distortion and saturation plugin and just do a bit light and gentle with it don't overdo it when you overdo it it, it becomes like you know uh too aggressive and that can work depending on the kind of song that you're mixing then the tone shaping part is uh, tone shaping. How do you decide what kind of tone you want to create for a vocal? It depends on the emotion of the song because every song they're telling a story and every story has an emotion, a, a specific emotion they're trying to convey. So for example, if you're mixing something that's R&B, okay, somebody raised their hand. Okay, Greg, go ahead. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, my, my question is, 
Can you Hello. turn up your microphone? I can't really hear access it to the document. Huh? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking how can we get access to the document you are using to explain? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the various topics. Okay, let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna put put the link in the in the chat right now, so everyone can just can just uh, go ahead and. So there you go. So, right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Uh, somebody came in recently. Uh, if you if you just came in, uh, Rosario, put put the uh, one of the the top biggest question you wanna you wanna ask. Put it in the chat so we can cover them. So let's keep going. So the tone section part of the vocal, when you're trying to do a when you're trying to create a tone, uh, I will usually ask myself, okay, what kind of emotion is the song? trying to convey. If it's R&B, you know, we know it's kind of smooth and soothing, then I know I have to scoop out a bit of the aggression, which is around 1K to 2K, you know, 2K to 4K sometimes. And if it's an aggressive song, I know I have to boost between 1K to 3K. That's where the aggression frequency is. And if it's something hairy, like just smooth, hairy, got to boost the whole, uh, a bunch of uh, 8K, 10K, 12K area and scoop out the meat and give it a little bottom. So those are the uh, things that I think about when I'm trying to create a tone that fits the emotion of the song, the story the song is talking about. Then the special effects, I didn't really put any, any uh, numbers in here for you, but if I'm gonna do that, I could just put 80 milliseconds or left or right, then 120 milliseconds on the right. That's usually good for slap. The reason I didn't put any numbers here because you could just use the preset and you should you should be good. Uh, the only thing I'll probably add is use some pre-delays. Pre-delay before your reverb to kind of push the reverb behind. And the pre-delay that I usually do is starting from 60 to maybe 120 milliseconds. But the reverb, because it's, you know, you could just use preset and just listen and see what fits into the emotion of the song. That's why I don't want to go into the details of typing, uh, you know, details. And the next thing I want to talk about, we'll come back to this, is skills and how to make some money with music production and mixing engineer. So before we go into that, I will go back to the session and do some mixing real quick. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. That's okay. That's okay. Right. So let's go back to the mix and then let's kind of do some practical example. Simple is the word, yeah. I'll be on the block trying to get me a check. Send four, six, say yes, a bit. Slap his head to turn red when it. Okay, now. I just showed you the CCTX framework, right? Now let's put it into practice. This is not gonna be a perfect one, but uh, this, should, this should work. So I'm bringing out my multiband compressor. This is the plugin, the stock plugins that come with Ableton Live. So I'm gonna bring out two or three multiband compressor, just like I said in the, then I'll bring out some EQ, then uh, what else is in there? Okay, so we talk about control. So C, the first C is control. The second C is character. So what do I need for character? Drive and color. I need some amp, some overdrive, some redox, some saturators, uh, maybe pedal. So that's the, that's the first two Cs, right? So we got control. I'm gonna use my multiband to create control. I'm gonna use C character 
I'm going to use the uh, uh, saturation decay character. What's the next one? T, tone. I'm going to use the EQ to shape the tone. Then uh, the last one is the, the X, which is the special effect. So I have some special effects here. This is reverb. And this is delay. Let me bring up another. Let me bring up another reverb. So, all right. So let's put this CCTS to practice, right? I'm going to solo this. Okay, good. If you can't see anything, please uh, say something so I know if you can't see it, because I can't know, I, I can't see what you guys are saying. Uh, <clears throat> so the first C is to control. So we want to create control, first of all. We want to create control with this plugin. So I'm muting all these other plugins so they're not messing with what we listen to. So the first C is the quick control. Hey, I'll be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six eight yes, bet. So the crossover is one hundred, one thousand. Then, then uh, if you have a multiband compressor that can go, uh, like that can do like four bands you don't have to do what I'm doing now. I'm using two to create one. So, so you see, I split the frequencies to 100 to 1K, then 1K to 10K. So I'm not gonna use this part up here and I'm not gonna use this part down here. So I'm gonna use this and this and this and this. I don't know if that makes sense. So, this is the attack and uh, I can put the attack at 10 milliseconds, it's good. So let's listen. Hey, I'll be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four, six, eight. And this is the, the ratio. So I put the ratio to two to one. You know, whatever DAW that you're using, this is gonna be different. So just put the numbers to what you have so i'm gonna use minus 25 to kind of dig in okay you see we're seeing reduction already i'll be on the block trying to give me a check all right but before i even go into that i talked about doing some groundwork right so because i don't want to waste time i'm not going to do the groundwork like i should but you guys should do that so the groundwork is, I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm doing so you know what to do. So, if I zoom in. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four, six, say yes, yeah, bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky wants So let's say. So let's say there's some vocals, there's some syllables here that's maybe too low or too high. I don't see any in this particular one. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four, six, say yes, yeah, bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. All right, so I don't really see anything that's not uh, level up. So I can just leave that. Maybe the only thing I might have to take out is maybe some bread or... Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four... So... Let me see. Sip, 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 sip. Yeah, that's not really bugging me either. Let me see what it is. Okay, I could probably turn that down a bit. A bit. So I would turn it down by maybe minus nine or minus six dB. Okay, turn that down by six dB. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just giving you an idea so you know what to do when you're alone. Slap, slap. Okay. So just turn down all the bread. So, all right, so that's enough for now. So I'm sure you, you get the idea. So let's go back to the, to the multiband compression so we can create the control. 
So once I set it up like that, uh, so I'm using the first one. So two millis, I mean, two ratio two to one, which two to one for this one too. Be on the block trying to give me a chance. Yeah, which two to one. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Be on the block trying to give me a Be on the block trying to give me a check. So the 100, I'm using that to remove the, the pluses. So I pull that in so I can pull down the pluses a lot. Be on the block trying to give me a check. All right. I want to delete the second one and duplicate the first one because that already has my my attack and release and the ratio so i don't have to do it again so i just, I just need to change this to 10k so then remove this one because i don't need that i'm just take this to 1000 be on the block trying to give me a check Send four six eight yes yeah, bed sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet black and won't stutter or run out of breath stop me that's something they ain't did yeah ufc she that? put a foot on they you see that we we're digging in around ten and one k to ten k around seven dB reduction right there. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did. Yeah. All right. So that's the control. So now I can see. So what what kind of tone am I going for? Because this rap, so rap, it needs some aggression. So I need to probably boost around that 1K, 3K area to give it some aggression. And also because it's a male vocal, it needs a little body on the on the on the bottom. So be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six eight yeah. And mind you, I'm using this cheap headphones. I can't really I can't really uh Judge by what I'm hearing. Be on the block trying to give me oh, a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Black and won't stutter or run out of breath. All right. So I need some mid range. So let me boost the mid range right here. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Black and won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me. That's something they ain't did. Yeah. UFC she put a foot on a neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Black and won't stutter or run out of breath. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Black and won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Black and won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me. That's something they ain't did. Yeah. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Okay, then uh, I want to have a little bit of shine, just a tiny bit, because it's wrapped. It don't really need that shine. And also, I'm remembering that the hi hat is already taking control of the six k or ten k area. So I just want to put a little bit here so we can be competitive in that range. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's some. All right. So now that I, I've done my multiband compression, I can start add some color with my amp and stuff. I don't want to overdo it, so I'm gonna do it just a tiny bit. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did. Yeah. UFC, she put a foot on their neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy Okay, do you notice that? That that just shifted my vocals like this. I don't know if you guys noticed. Listen. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six a yes a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Okay, it gave me a, a, a presence, and which I like, but it took away some of my aggression. So what can I do to combat that? So maybe I would... Uh, Put this in a put this in a in a parallel processing type, but I'll leave that and come back to it. Let me try the overdrive. 
Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock he won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. See, this give me the aggression I'm looking for, which is in the mid range. This is saturating and driving the, the 1K area, which is where the aggression is, right? Be on the block trying to give me a check. Send four six say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock he won't stutter or run out of breath. All right. Then the read up. Is like uh, so. It's better to probably. I like to put that in the beginning, actually. Kind of create some type of top end shame for me. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something. That Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. You know what? So what does I have here? Saturator. Just had a little bit of that too. Let me do 4 dB. Let me 4 dB. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. All right. So let's let's put the music back in so we can kind of have a, an idea what's going on. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky like won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky like won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky like won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something. So I'm going to move the saturation back so they can all go through the multiband compression. Then um, I'm going to add another multiband compressor, but this time I'm going to do something else. Add like uh, 50 milliseconds of attack and 10 milliseconds. So that can give me more, more attack, like an overall attack. So. Let's do this. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass, put a nigga to rest. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass, put a nigga to rest. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through tech. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass, put a nigga to rest. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy, this gap, but don't hit me through Trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky like it won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky like it won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yeah.
Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, but don't hit me. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, but don't hit me through. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, but don't. All right, so let's go to the last. Uh... Any question on what I've done so far? I, know I could, you know, just dig in and do a little more, but I just wanted to make this, you know, faster. If you have any question, please ask. Ask so. Um, I was just watching. Did you? Uh, I see. Like you have the amp and the saturator muted there, or is it that you moved it on the chain somewhere else? It looks. As yeah, as I, I I only used the the drive and I put it in front of the. Multiband compressor because I wanted the multiband compressor to compress that you know sound of the amp going in too, and this I can use this. But if I'm going to use it, I'm going to create a parallel, a parallel uh, chain. So it's not right, going. So like a send, yeah, but send. Yeah, so it's not going through. I can use that because I like what it did to the vocal. It had it a lot of uh, presence. Yes, yes. But I already that created color. that presence with this my eq in here i don't know if you guys notice how i was eq while the beat was playing i don't know if you noticed that i already got my presence from here but if i need more presence i can add this and add it in parallel to the original signal like this be on the block trying to give me a check 10 4 6 say yeah it's a bed sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet glocky won't stutter or run out of breath stop me that's something they ain't did yeah ufc she put a foot on they neck the boy did be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky wants So I just turn it down and put the parlor with the original. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky wants to stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, yeah, but don't hit me through check. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, yeah, but don't hit me through check. Put a hole in his head, put a nigga to rest. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap. Yeah, be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, but don't hit me through check. Put a hole in his head, put a nigga to rest. All right. So let's have some uh, effects. Uh, because it's rap, so we don't really have to add too much of stuff. I'll just do a delay. I'll do some delay and uh, where the delay is there? Some delay, maybe a, a chorus or something. Just a little widening effect. I can actually use the 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 slap the slap numbers that I just gave you guys. Let me see. Yeah, I could do that. That eighty by one twenty. That's a really good way to widen vocals, so I can show you. So you know how to do that. Uh... Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten, four, six, say yes, yeah, a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did. Yeah, UFC, she put a foot on their neck. Put a hole in his head, put a nigga to rest. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, say yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Okay, this is one of my, one of my, this is one of my biggest tricks for creating, uh, a big, like a real good reverb that can that just push uh, a reverb that you can push into the back of the mix. 
So you use a delay like this, or maybe a, a maybe a shorter one actually. But see, this delay they're the same, forty three and forty three. But we want to we want one to be higher or lower. So then I had a reverb, the reverb in there. So Drake used this technique a lot right here. Uh, so put in the second one. You said I'm cutting the mid range because the mid range is where we're boosting our vocals. Remember that 1K, 2K area? So I'm cutting that in the reverb. So the reverb is not fighting with my vocals. So we're just spreading it, the frequency out into a different energy space. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, 8, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy is head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on their neck. Wow. This vocal sounds good. On this cheap headphones, it sounds amazing, you know? I can actually plug in my Slate headphones, but that doesn't have a microphone to talk back. That's why I'm not using it. I'm only using this cheap one. Um, Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, eight. It sounds good on here. How does the vocal sound on, on your end? Because I can't, I can't hear what you guys are hearing. Can you tell me, guys, how does the vocal sound over there? good bro <laughs> so let's let's go the before and after so i'm going to mute what we've done so far the reverb and uh and the and the plugins that we added on so we can hear the before and after be on the block trying to give me a check 10 4 6 a yeah it's a bed sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet glocky won't stutter or run out of breath stop me that's something they ain't did yeah ufc she put a foot on a neck so that's before and this is after be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, 8, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. So, do you think the CCTS framework, does it work or not? Let's have some conversation about that. Yeah, yeah. So far, I like any process. I, I Basically, this is the process I follow. But yes, I get lazy and don't do some of the groundwork, <laughs> like the clip gene and stuff like that. Yeah. Anybody want to say something about the CCTS framework? All right. So, uh, Let's hear the let's hear it with the beat again. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, 8, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on a neck. The boy did get, but don't hit me through check. Put a hole in his head, put a nigga to rest. So, let's say we want to... You want the vocal to kind of maybe go inside the beat a little bit because sometimes sometimes you you want you want that effect sometimes you want the vocal to be on top of the beat sometimes you want to be inside the beat so let's see if we could do that so i'm going to reduce that by minus six and let's hear the vocals with the beat be on the block trying to give me a check 10 4 6 a yeah it's a bit sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet glocky won't stutter or run out of breath Wow, I just took it down by 6 dB and we can still hear the vocal clearly. So. Be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, 8, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to See that, with, with that uh, reduction of 6 dB, like the vocal is right in front. So if we kind of push it in with minus 6 dB cut, be on the block trying to give me a check. 10, 4, 6, 8, yeah, it's a bed. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did, yeah. UFC, she put a foot on a neck. The boy did get, but don't hit me through check. All right. I like that, too. I like that, too. So I want to add, a, like, a widening chorus effect. 
on the vocals because rap. Yeah, I, mean, I find it it's it's set nice. So in the bit there's your your the gain reduction. You said what? I find it set the vocals set nicer in the rhythm into the beat as you have the gain reduction. With the minus six dB reduction, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy is here to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me that But another another thing you have to realize as a mix engineer for artists, some artists don't like that. I will tell you, I want my vocals up front. Even some labels will say they actually, they actually they have the acts for the vocal up mix and the you know the vocal down mix. So some people like their vocals to sit right on top of everything. So that's why. Yes, yes. You got to know who you're working with to kind of decide you know which direction you want to go. Yeah, I just want some just dance around to kind of create the movement and the and the and the what width. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. Be on the block trying to give me a check. Ten four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glacky won't stutter or run out of breath. All right. I guess that's it for this uh, vocal mixing vocals to track. Any questions? This is the time to ask. Please go ahead. Any questions? Um, we haven't heard from uh, Jane. I don't think I heard Jane uh, speak yet. And uh, Rosario. And um, I think Greg. Yeah, I don't think I heard Greg talk either. So you guys want to say something, maybe introduce yourself and ask some of the, any question that you want to learn today? Oh, okay. This is Greg again. Uh... Okay. You know, it's like the whole process, like you, you guys are mentioning numbers and it's totally new to me, you know. I'm very basic in this. Uh, actually, I've, I've just been doing beat making, but then and I've, I've gone through a few, I've watched some few lessons on YouTube I don't think I'm satisfied. That is why when I saw you, I, I came here. So um, um okay. So the the numbers that I I'm that just I a put on, the... I mean, like I'll say uh, what I huh? Yeah. So yeah, can you can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. So I think one of the things I've learned here on this platform is uh, is about listening very well and then knowing what you really want to hear after you you are done with your mixing, right? So <clears throat> I think that will work with me. I'll, I'll start with that for now, and then probably and the groundwork you you also showed today. I think I've gotten some few ideas. But I have to take time to go through the DAO, like uh, the Cubase. Uh, so. All right. No problem. Uh, yeah. If there's, um, if there's any other yeah. question that you want, just type it in the chat. So, um, Jane. And, oh, okay. So. And, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is there any uh, maybe videos of you? showing like uh, beginners uh, mixing yeah, I, I have, so uh, I have a whole fall. bunch of courses on my on my website so you guys can go there yeah okay uh, uh, please can you can you put the link in the chat so that probably i'll just follow from there yes yeah okay thank you <clears throat> Yeah. All right.
Rosario, are you there? You want to say something to us? All right. If I don't hear from them, then we'll move into the next thing. Uh, okay, the method for knowing what frequency to boost. That's a good question, Rosario. Uh, let me see, is anyone who asked that question up here? Yes. Okay, Aaron to ask about frequency, ticket translation, and yeah. So the thing with the frequency, uh, but what I can teach you guys about frequency, let me see. Hmm. Um, frequency, you have to think about frequency like, you know, like in a piano, if you play piano, anyone who plays piano, probably not everyone play, plays piano. So in piano, there's octave and pitches, they have octave. So do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. So like octaves, that's how you know pitch. That's how you know frequency because frequency and pitch, they kind of go hand in hand. It's the same thing. So how do you know what frequency to cut? Uh, the, the easiest way to know is to just boost around and find something that annoys you and pull it down. But that's what they, you know, that's what it, they teach us. But later on, I figured that, yeah, that's cool. But when it comes to mixing elements together to fit in, that, that's not going to really help you. So you have to know how to, how to make instruments fit together is by doing subtractive and additive EQing, which is to figure out, OK, what frequency is this instrument in? And what frequency does this sound good at? Then you look at the other one and you say, what other frequency does this have that's stepping over this one? Then you remove it. So uh, let, let me see if I can bring up a session of mine and just show you some stuff. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Let me save this session and show you some stuff. Okay, did Greg, did, did Greg just raise his hand or something? Or is that all we yeah. doing? Uh, okay, go yeah, ahead. about frequencies, uh, about the frequencies, I want to ask a question because <clears throat> about the piano, you know, the piano is more like it's sitting, it's having the low, lower frequencies, the mid range, and then the high range at the yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you go about that when it's in the mix? Yeah. Because some people, for example, if you are playing uh, contemporary gospel music, sometimes you want to hear maybe the low end of, of your of your keyboard, probably. And okay, um, let me you show know, you an example. Let me show you an example. I was in this mix that I just pull up right here. So uh, let me see. If, can you guys hear this? Okay. Okay, I did this song, and uh, Siraya actually came to record this song eventually. But when I made this, make this song, I, I did it with a writer, a whole bunch of things just blending it together, right? So let's say I want to, I want one, one of them to be like the lead. This is like a three things doing the same thing, just like a layered, layered on top of each other. So together they sound. So let's say I want to EQ them to fit together, which I, I don't think they needed it because I don't. I don't think I did that. So I had some saturation and all that. But to illustrate the point, what I would do is I would look at this first one. Okay, see? 
I can I can figure out I look I look at the frequency and I try to find it. I can say where is it at on the on the frequency spectrum? Where where is it dominating now? You see right here? So that's around 200, 500 is. That's the fundamentals. You know, there's fundamentals and there's a monitor. That's how every sound is. That's like the basics of sound. There's fundamental, then the harmonic gives you the character, the timbre, the tone. So I can use my EQ to see, okay. So let me isolate the, the fundamentals because the fundamental is 200 to 500, right? You see? I just isolated the I just isolated the, the fundamental. If I remove these, the sound became brighter because you're hearing the character, the distortion, I mean, the saturation, the um, overtones and all that. So I can now still get the other one, which is the third one here. Where, where is it at? The third one here. You see that? I can say, okay, I want that to be the other side of the frequency because I want the first one to dominate the fundamental and I want that one that has more saturation. I can cut that off from 200 to 500 area so it can dominate that. So when I put that back in, then I can just on its own, then this other one, I will, I will cut the, the fundamental here. So I want to play together. Okay, I turn that down. So you can, I turn it down so you can hear the fundamental alone. So that's the concept. So when I'm EQing, I'm creating space and carving space for each element where to sit. And the driving force of those decisions comes down to one thing. Which element is dominating in this particular section? Once you find that out, then that, that element, that instrument become the, the, the priority and everything else just move around it. Does that, does, that, does that make sense, everyone? Or do you want me to explain it a different way? Hello? Yeah, I'm following. I think I understand. Okay. So when it comes to frequency, that, that's how you find frequency to cut. Because before, what I used to do is just, what I used, this is what I used to do before when I, when I was learning on YouTube. They said, oh, just, Boost it and find something that's annoying and remove it. This is what I do. <laughs> sweep in, sweep in. Yeah, so that, that's what it that's what it taught us on online. Just swoop in and in a cut, cut. But you notice that I cut, cut, cut. I would just cut a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff, and the instrument start to sound weird. Like yeah, yeah, start know? empty, yeah, yeah, empty, yeah. 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 Losing so character. You don't want to do that. You want to do just based on because every situation is different whatever you have in front of you would determine where you want to go direction wise so that if you always go with that uh, framework i think it will it will help you a lot so don't just cut just in the sake of cutting cut to leave space for other stuff and whatever you don't need just cut it so for example i don't need the the 1K area for this sound because I want the fundamental area to dominate. So, so I just I just cut the other part of it. And here, I don't want the, the bottom side. I want the the 
over tone to dominate. So, so if I leave this like this and stack a whole bunch of stuff like that, what happens to my headroom? Disappears. That's why your mix doesn't get loud because you are, you are using too much energy, wasted energy. This, by cutting this, gives me more headroom and there's more energy because frequency, they're like voltage, they're like electricity. If you turn all the electricity on in your house, what happens? Your bill goes up. But if you come out of a room and you turn that off, you come out that room, you turn it off. You're kind of using it efficiently. It's the same way. Whatever you don't need, cut it. Only use, only leave in what you need. And like, like that, you're saving energy. You know, it, it's track. By the time you get to your mix bus and your master bus, you have loud music with big energy because you, you're saving a whole bunch of energy by cutting what you don't need. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, sure. So uh, I remember the Aaron was asking earlier about mix bus. So what I usually, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I've tried for my mix bosses, but now I just do K-clip, K-clip, just the default setting. Then uh, uh, Africa Pro 2, you know, we could just put that at default too. So this just shaving off all the, all the top. But if you want to really go crazy, sometimes I use my uh, NLS waves to add some saturation at the master bus. So I will add, nice. I will add a bunch of this, maybe like I'll put like a one, one drive. Then I'll use the spike, the mic, the mic and the Nevo to add saturation at the master bus. So let's I use that three times. So when I'm done with that, then I can use uh I have this settings that I that I got from from uh, Jason Joshua. I can give it to you guys wanting. So where is it at? Uh, it's a multi-band compressor setting and it, it just, you know, push your vocal, I mean, your mix, you just make it sharp all of a sudden. Where, where is it at? I think it's this one right here. So. So this is it. Let me turn it on. Oh, computer is acting up. All right. Anyway, computer, I want to play. This is the settings right here. If you can copy, copy real quick. Uh, screenshot of the screen grab. So 50 milliseconds at the at the low end, the release is at one one milli, I mean one second. Then uh, 20 milliseconds in the mid range, one millisecond for all the releases. Then uh, you boost in four dB in output. Then then the ratio is two to one. And this is how much you're pushing in. So, you know what? I mean, let me copy it and take it to the other session because that down has less plugins in there. So, so we can hear the effect of the, so we can hear the effect of this uh, compressor, uh, this multiband compressor on. So without Black trying to give me a check, send four six eight years a bit. Now with Black trying to give me a check, send four six eight years a bit. Sloppy is here to How's that sound to you? <laughs> it's crazy, right? 
Banging. Yeah. So I'll just put a, see, this, this is what I put in the settings. I just put the L2, I don't even touch it. I just put it on there. So I put L2 and K clip. And the reason I'm using K clip, I'm, I'm you know, clipping any, any overs coming above zero. Trying to give me a check. Sin four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glocky won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did yet. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did gap, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hose in his ass, put a nigga to rest. Um, let's see, where, where is that? That loudness. I wanna see what I'm hitting. Glock trying to give me a check. Send four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock it won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did yet. UFC she put a foot on their neck. The boy did get yeah, but don't. Yeah. Without. Glock trying to give me a check. Send four six say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock it won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did yet. UFC she put a foot on their neck. The boy did get yeah, but don't hit me through tech. All right, so that's it. So any other mixing question, I want to go over the money stuff real quick. Uh, anyone interested in making some money? One more question on your level meter. Okay, so what is the mix of money on your face? Yeah, see, that's a debatable question. Uh, he's asking about the LUFX. I usually hit, I try to hit like minus seven, minus eight minus six depending on the mix but uh whenever you put your music on spotify itunes wherever they have an algorithm that's always gonna push it down because they have their own set lufs loss that they want the music to be at but if you do your mix properly you know uh, and you, you manage your mid range properly and you manage your picks, you're not distorting before they push you down. You, you, you have tendency to be louder than the other guys. That's how you win the loudness war. So, and the reason why I'm not doing any, I'm not doing so much with my limiter, you see, I don't touch it. Most people would just, they would do this. This is how they get their music to get loud. That's what you sh you guys are doing, right? You push this to get it to get loud. Yes or no? Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, but I'm not doing that, but I'm still hitting minus eight, minus seven. Look at that. Glock trying to give me a check. Send four, six, say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock, it won't stutter or run out of breath. Stop me, that's something they ain't did yet. UFC, she put a foot on they neck. The boy did get, but don't hit me through tech. Put a hole in his ass, put a nigga to rest. So I'm doing that. I'm doing everything before it gets to the limiter. And I, whatever loudness that I'm pushing, I'm pushing into a clip. The K clip does what? It clips any overs. In my in a in a good mix, I mean when I'm doing like an overall mix, you you see me use K clip like 200 times. What am I doing? Instead of waiting for me to clip everything on the mix bus, I do all the clipping individual channel. Like if I'm mixing this for you, I'll put a K clip right here. Like trying to give me a check. Send four, six, eight, yeah, it's a bit. I'll put a K, K clip right there. And on my vocals. I don't use K clip, I use like a, a limiter. Any limiter I would do, but this is the best one that I use that I've found so far. Track limit, put it on the aggressive on 20 milliseconds, no, 50 milliseconds. That's it, I don't touch it, just leave it like that. Glock like trying to give me a check. Send four, six, say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. See, I'm not, the vocal is not even loud because it's not reaching zero yet. So that's not really doing much. So now if I go back to my L2, let's see if the L2 is actually reducing anything here. Glock trying to give me a check. Send four, six, say yeah, it's a bit. Sloppy his head to turn red when it's wet. Glock it won't stutter or run out of bricks. L2 is only doing one dB reduction. 
Isn't that isn't that crazy? And I'm super loud. And L2 is only doing one dB reduction. Why is that? That's because everything came in loud before you reach the um the limiter. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because everything is being I'm clipping everything before I reach my my pro there, L2. Everything is as its max, yeah, max before it even Maximum, gets there. Yeah. So you maximize everything. And that's 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 why when we get to uh my can you see the what do you guys see on the screen right now uh, blank big square okay let me, let me put the so so we we'll talk about that so when we get to my clapper the clapper method is another method that i use that's another framework. Like I, I taught you the framework for the vocal mixing, the clapper method. This is what clapper means. So clapper stands for maximum clarity, maximum loudness, speaker adaptation, puncture groove, emotional distortion, and four day realism. So those are the techniques that I use when I'm mixing with clapper. Everything is maximized to the loudness before they even reach the the uh the limiter so so that's that's clapper method and um, any question any question so if any one of you guys want to reach out to me for like a personal training, you can reach out. And um, before we do that, let me go over the money issue because money matters, right? Money matters, right? Yeah. Let's talk about some money. Yeah, sure. So this is how you make money. If you want to make 5,000 right now as a mix engineer, this is the blueprint. So whatever you're doing right now, can somebody come on the on the microphone so that's already making money so we can we can figure out how we can help you make more. If you are you a producer that makes for client or production, anyone who does that for a living? Well, as I mentioned before, I do the um audio engineering side for advertising. So I do radio commercials, voiceovers, jingles, that kind of thing. Okay. So how many clients do you do every every month? Oh, um, I have clients every day. <laughs> okay, good. Um, How many I deal mostly well, I deal mostly with advertising agencies. Um, I have a few clients that come direct, like Pizza Hut and a couple other clients, Subway and stuff, but um most of it is through agencies. So they just contact me um with the scripts, ask me to source the talent. Um, they'll give me a direction or whatever, then I put it together and present it to them and it gets approved or not, you know. Okay. Yeah, well, this could work for you too, but this is, I created this for people who are actually mixing for maybe artists or maybe a producer or a mix engineer who makes for artists and want to get more clients. Right. So this can work for you, but this is the number right here. So let's say, for example, an average an average uh, mixing gig is $200. I don't know how much people pay for mixing out there now. Uh, how much do you guys charge for mixing? Um, well, at the moment, uh, the whole COVID scene had mashed up the music industry for a while down in Trinidad and Tobago. By the way, good night, everybody. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and well, me and a couple of other friends tried to revive it by starting a $9.99 special, which you know, in TT dollars is not much compared to US dollars, um, which was basically, we give you an hour to come and record your vocals, and then we will mix and master it for you within okay. that. Well, I mean, it was really a thousand dollars, but $9.99 as a whole trick, you know, really, <laughs> it makes it sound better. Yeah. All right. So let's say you mix for uh, nine ninety nine. So that's a uh, nine ninety nine. Is that a hundred dollar or ten dollar? What is that? 
um that that's nine hundred and ninety nine dollars so a thousand dollars basically but that's the record mix and master yeah oh nine ninety nine record mix and master i would say yeah that's even way higher so i'm do i i i use the number that's way lower on average so let's say average is two hundred dollars per gig per song so the the way to get to five thousand is to do twenty five gigs a month which is like seven gigs every week. And how do you get to that? You can get to that with, uh, if you're using like Facebook advertising to build a list and collect uh, email address, phone numbers, name from online. And you can get leads coming in for maybe uh, $2 per person or a dollar per person. And you can build that list and once you build, get the list from Facebook one time, that customer can bring you like an LTV long term uh, value for a thousand, or maybe they come back to you two times in a year or three times in a year. That's that's six hundred per person for somebody that you get on Facebook for two dollar or one dollar per person. So, and if you if you set this up, you can get 25 gigs like that in a month. 25 times 200, that's 5,000. And if you want to even double that, you can multiply that uh, seven gigs weekly to 14 every week. If you can handle the heat, I mean, the, the volume, you can do 56 a month that can get you to 11K up per month just by just by you know getting leads on facebook and setting up uh facebook ads to get you customers from online and I, I do that myself so i can show you my my lead ads on my facebook let me see if i can pull up so you can see how much i'm paying for for leads let me see any, any, anyone here running Facebook ads for their business? Hello? Yeah, um, I, I boost no. posts sometimes. Uh, so let, let me share my Facebook ad with you guys one second. Okay. Can you see this? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. So this this is a dollar thirty six. This is still running right now. Let me turn it off. So we've got thirty one leads. Six forty one. I mean four dollars. We've got one dollar thirty six, and that's you got thirty thirty one. And I've only spent how much? Forty-two dollars. And and I just put a video ads on there. So I put a video ad on there. I made this on Canva. And I do and I put a text on there. And people just reach out to me. It's as simple as that. You can just collect their leads and start running them. If you want me to help you set it up, you can reach out to me. I'll help you with the setup. So you can do that and collect their leads and do 20, 25 gigs per month. That will get you to $5,000 a month, depending on how much you're charging. You know, I just did the math at two hundred dollars per, per 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 gig but like uh aaron said aaron's is getting paid a thousand dollars per gig so if you put this uh machine behind whatever you're doing it's going to blow it up and multiply it so any question yeah uh, about a uh, about the ads yeah go ahead yeah yeah at the point in time, I, I I play the piano, so I was trying to do piano lessons that is on YouTube. 
and on Facebook, but because of because of school, I was inconsistent at the point in time. But now I'm I've now completed and I want to continue. But then I would love that you show show us how to run the ads so that at least we can get to customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. It's 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 pretty easy. Like I showed you here, I okay. put a put a video. I made this on Canva. Put a video, and then you put a text okay. of what you're doing. And I say get industry quality. So for you, you can say get piano lessons from you know professional piano player. Um, blah blah blah. Put a okay. headline on there, and you call to action. Learn more or apply or book now. Maybe for you, it's probably book now. So. This ad is a lead ad. You know, the different type of ads you can do on Facebook. This is a lead ad. Lead means it, it, once they click here, they tell me how many songs they want to make. They click one. Then, then uh, it collects their name and their number. So once I have their okay. name and the number, I can text them or call them or email them and let them know, hey, when do you want to book time for your piano session? And once you have okay. that name and a number, you don't have to go back to Facebook to go get to go get them. You already got them. So that's how you build your list. You can build uh -huh. your list to like a thousand of you know of potential customer and you just email them and you text them. And that's how you do that's how you build it. And if you the more conversation okay. you have every week, the more money you make. See? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys. Um, any other question before we round up? Uh, Rosario, how do you contact me for professional training? Um, I can give you guys my number actually. Four five two four. You can text me that and just let me know that you you know you attended the mixing lounge. Then uh, we could take the conversation from there. If any of you need my number, you can copy it from there. <clears throat> So, uh, so we get into the end, and I want to thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for taking time out to. So I showed you how to build your music producer task machine. If you need help, you can book a call with me so we can talk about it. So, thank you guys for coming and. Um, um, so did, can you, I want you guys to, you know, say something about this training. What, 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 what did you learn from here today? Did, tell us what you learned from here today. Did you learn something or you didn't learn anything at all? Yes, yes, I definitely. Oh, Sorry, go ahead, you go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will say uh, I've learned a lot of things here. Yeah. Yeah, and, and one of them is about listening because I think it's very important because uh, when I'm listening to some pre musics that are, you know, really nice, you know, like you spoke about uh, having a mental picture of, of it, you know, sometimes listening to music, like you begin to imagine like what really went on behind the one producing it, you know, begin to see pictures, like probably sometimes like a bird flying, like maybe at more. Okay, thank you. Uh, Aaron? Here, Riverside, oh, enjoy. So 
Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, so. Uh, All right, Aaron, uh, what, the, the what listening would you aspect got to is say? also cool and about a uh, EQing. Okay, EQing. Yeah, about about the EQing, I think uh, what I've, I've learned today is about you knowing the type of instrument and then the frequency they see they are supposed to be in. So maybe probably, for example, to my understanding, let's say if the instrument is a bass instrument, you make it sit as where the bass spectrum is, you know, and if it is a mid instrument, you, you made it, yeah, you must make it sit at where it's supposed to be. So I think it's quite an interesting stuff. I love it. All right. Who else wants to tell us what they learned today? Um, I just <laughs> got a reminder to stop skipping the, the groundwork because uh, yes, that does help a lot, especially with compression and stuff. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to try your method of two track mixing. It might be a lot easier as well to, as you say, after you already get your vocal song and how you want it, you get your, uh, your instrumental sound and like how you want it. And yes, it's good to you to use both your eyes and your ears. Sometimes your ears might miss something, you know? Um, yep. That's what I was watching. You were using the spectrum there. And I was like, hey, I do really use my spam. My, my, I don't use that for, for that part of it. It's more the ears. I, I should start using that as well, too. Um, and then, then you just shape out where you want the vocal to sit exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Winston, what'd you learn today? Uh, EQing, big time. Um, because I was EQing by, you know, just taking out the frequencies that I didn't like. But you 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 showed us how to compare it with another instrument and so that the other instrument make us sit on, you know, be a little, little more powerful in the mix. Or you choose which one to sit up in the mix the, the most, you know. So it makes it that makes a whole lot more sense than just because I'm just EQing, I'm I'm broad sweeping and I'm just taking, you know, little, little frequencies out here and there, but you know, I could really, I could really form the sound so that they fit better together, and also, also the tricks with the uh, the multi band um, um, uh, compressors, man. That's that's crazy. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, okay. Uh, Rosalia, Rosario, Thomas, and Jane, what did you guys learn? Okay. Mm, I don't know. Do you guys have a microphone, or maybe you don't have a microphone uh, connected? Um, Patrick. Oh, CCTS. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. CCTS is 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 really good uh, framework for mixing vocals. And maybe one of these days I will teach you guys my clapper method. How we can go over how to use the clapper. Uh, it's another framework that I use for mixing. So that's another good stuff. Maybe it's another time. Uh, um, well, all right, that's it. Rosario, okay, sorry, I don't. I don't know how to use Zoom. This is my first time in the spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next meeting, um, a lot of people didn't show up today um, from the registration. A, a bunch of people that registered didn't show up. So maybe the timing wasn't good for everyone. Uh, but let me ask you guys that here. What what timing would you prefer for a net, for another one? What's your preferred time? I know people in different time zones. That's always you know the challenge. So can I hear some ideas for the time? Um, th this time was okay for me. You are four four hours ahead of me, so it started like around seven p.m. So by that time I'm home and 
I, I settle, but again, that's just me. <laughs> you had to check with everybody else. All right. So uh, I was thinking about doing it in the weekend, but some people don't, uh, they're not available in the weekend because they have to do other stuff after work. So that's why I chose uh, a weekday. So uh, Greg, say something, Greg. I think the time is okay because here in Ghana, I think we started around 11 p.m. By that time, I'm home. I'm not doing anything. I'm not. So I think okay. it's cool. All right. So if you guys say that Thursday, 4 p.m. works for you, 4 p.m. MST, my time. So we, we can try to do another one next week, Thursday. Or maybe let, let's push it to uh, the, the, the two, two weeks so we can you know, maybe get more people to attend. Uh, maybe this week or next week. Let me see. What what date is that? What date is uh this week or next two weeks? The twenty second. The twenty second. Yeah. Okay, twenty. No, no, no. Sorry, twenty nine. Oh, twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we should do 29 or 29, 22nd. Which one Either you or I'm good. Huh? Either or is good for me, is whichever is good for everybody. What is good for you guys? 22nd or 29? Just type it in the chat too. Yeah, type it in the chat, whatever, which, which date is good for you. Twenty second. Twenty second will do. Okay. So we got two twenty second. Rosari and Jane and uh Winston, what do you guys think? Any date will do for me. I'm fine. All uh, right. I'm flexible. Okay. So uh let, let's let's do let's do twenty second then. So 22nd, it is same time next week. We'll meet again. And um, if you have any question, text it to that number that I put on the thing. Any particular thing you want me to cover, just text it to me so I can prepare. So. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thank you guys for I'm a, coming, I'm, man. I'm going to buy your thing too tonight. All right. All right. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank, Thank you, Paul. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Have a good one.